so yes, I'm here to talk to you today about Julie, Julie Clegg. Uh, she may not yet be a household name in television, but to her fandoms, she might be considered the Shonda Rhimes of the CW network. <laughs> so let's get going here. She has brought to the network The Vampire Diaries with Kevin Williamson, The Originals, Legacies, Containment, and The Tomorrow People. She is a jack of all trades, wearing the hats of writer, producer, and director, helming episodes of The Vampire Diaries, Riverdale, and the new Roswell reboot, which she's also executive producing. Earlier this year, Plex signed a multi-year deal with Warner Brothers as well. But what's interesting, Plex has never fancied herself a writer, like ever. <laughs> she began her career in Hollywood as an assistant to an agent, then became the assistant to Wes Craven on Scream, where she met her future work husband, Kevin Williamson, who happened to show her a script for a little show called Dawson's Creek that he was working on. She went on to executive produce that in season two while he was on Teaching Mrs. Tingle. But she really didn't get her start on writing um, until she started working on Kyle XY for ABC. <laughs> See some fans. <laughs> um, they had lost their only female writer on the show. And the executive producer said, hey, you know the show as well as anybody else. Why don't you write an episode? And according to her, it was literally that easy. <laughs> Which it was always that easy. <laughs> she ended up penning eight episodes over its three-season run. So about the same time, an executive at the CW approached, uh, approached Julie Clegg and Kevin Williamson. Um, from, they, an executive from the CW, did I say that? Probably. Um, they had optioned a book series from the 1990s, and they were looking for writers. And as Clegg puts it, we volunteered. <laughs> that series was The Vampire Diaries, which premiered on the CW in 2009. Now they were very concerned that people would only see it as the TV version of Twilight because the source material was similar to uh, Stephanie Meyer's books. Um, so in order to differentiate it, Pleck and Williamson centered the series around the town of Mystic Falls instead of just like the love triangle aspect. So doing this opened up the entire world and centuries of history, as she puts it. As the show evolved, its focus also shifted to the brotherly bond between Damon and Stefan Salvatore, um, exploring how they dealt with loss and ultimately their redemption. So they had differentiated it, which was good, but it still needed to find its niche. And it did. The Vampire Diaries found its home in the sweet spot between the other two vampire series, Twilight and True Blood. Where Twilight lacked gore and traditional vampire lore, Vampire Diaries made up for it. Where True Blood went full throttle with sex and violence, Vampire Diaries toned it back a bit. <laughs> so it was truly a vampire sweet spot. <laughs> so The Vampire Diaries aired for eight seasons, making it the longest running primetime vampire series, beating out Buffy the Vampire Slayer by one season. Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> <laughs> of the experience, Plex states, Kevin Williamson and I wrote a show about loss and grief that just so happened to have vampires in it. We touched people with that story, and maybe we even helped people. We certainly helped ourselves. This show left an imprint on my heart. And while Vampire Diaries will always hold a special place in her heart, there were still more stories to tell. Pluck created the spin-off The Originals, which centered on the first family of vampires who made their debut in season two of The, of the Vampire Diaries. She found that they were trimming back storylines for these characters in any given episode, so having a spin-off was a no-brainer. It premiered in 2013, and it just ended its five-year run this past August. But there are still more stories to tell. Plex's newest spin-off is called Legacies, and that premiered last Thursday. Okay. So, it's in week two. <laughs> um, it centers around Hope Michelson, who is the daughter of the original vampire werewolf hybrid Klaus, as she navigates life at school for supernatural kids. It also features the character of Alark Saltzman from The Vampire Diaries as well. So I think it's safe to say that Pleck knows a thing or two about working in television. And she calls it a game of survival. <laughs> she goes on to compare writing for television to a machine and has a colorful description for a bad day. It's a runaway train. It's a relentless assault on your sanity, soul, friendships, self-esteem, liver, patience, <laughs> kindness, faith in humanity, blood pressure, stress levels, personal life, and your ability to parent and care for something, anything, whether a child or a plant. <laughs> so she doesn't sugarcoat things, but she also 
knows that the good days tend to outweigh the bad, and she also offers advice to TV writers. She views a staff writer's job is to emulate and mimic their showrunner so the series has a cohesive voice. She also suggests you pay attention to the showrunner's pet peeves. For instance, Miss Pleck hates exclamation points. <laughs> Noted. Uh, uh. Pike also points out that being a staff writer is a training ground for becoming a showrunner. She explains that it's not about whether or not your ideas are taken, it's about how to present yourself for success in the environment of a writer's room and to really suck in every step of the process. In an Entertainment Weekly article, she graciously outlines her five tongue-in-cheek key steps to writing a good finale. In her words, here they are. Step one, May of the pre previous season, decide how you want next season to end. If you haven't figured it out before you start shooting in July, you're very likely screwed. <laughs> it's cliche, but weddings, graduations, founders days, vampire cures, and major character exits make for a big idea, an easy big idea, to build the finale around. Step two, take a very brief vacation, during which you hope that five minutes of rest and relaxation don't give you the clarity to realize all of your big plans suck. <laughs> Step three, don't stall, never stall. If you can't make your pitch, hold out until the finale, use it early, or ditch it. Also, be flexible. The perfect idea you had may need some tweaking before you get there. Step four, survive episodes 12 to 17. <laughs> your, chap your first chapter is complete, but you're not close enough to start building to the finale. You're gonna need another big idea to get you through the middle. For example, from the Vampire Diaries, you had the two vampires from season one, the Winnebago Werewolves in Season 2, and the undaggering of the original family in Season 3, etc. And finally, Step 5. It's finale time! Break the last act first. You already know what you want it to be, then earn your way towards it. If you've built the end of the season right, the story will come together with ease. If you've misjudged the last few episodes, you will suffer mightily. <laughs> but the good news is, it will all be over in a matter, matter of days. Until you start next season. <laughs> Julie Pleck is a fierce producer, director, and even writer, much to her own surprise. In creating The Vampire Diaries with Kevin Williamson and then the originals and legacies, she's brought forth her passion for telling stories about familial relationships that reach beyond the show's genre. While making it in Hollywood isn't easy, and she'd be the first to say so, for Pleck, it's worth it. Reflecting on the end of The Vampire Diaries, she states, as we brought our business to an end, we all got to be artists and human beings, and it was beautiful. <laughs>